Hey there, Aquarius. Welcome to your reading for May 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. My email is in the description box below. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is going to be a general reading. Okay. Energies are fluid, time is an illusion. So just because this is coming through with May, I really feel like, honestly, I, I'm really getting to the point where I feel like all of the readings that I'm doing here are incredibly timeless um, for the collective. Even if it's a personal reading, it probably could be pretty t timeless as well. However, for the collective readings and for like the general readings, it's very much uh, timeless. So, you know, whenever you're guided to watch it, if it's not even May of 2019 that you're actually watching this video, and you were guided to watch it, or it's resonating with you in some way, just take it as it resonates, yeah? Um, okay, so keeping it cute as we normally do here, we're doing a little bit of the same, but we're still doing a little bit different, yes? I am using the crystal, not the crystal, well, hold on. I'm using the Golden Universal Tarot for the general messages. I'm starting with that again. I'm putting the Oracle Guidance back at the end of the reading, but this time, instead of using the Unicorn of the Oracles, I'm sorry, the Oracle of the Unicorns, I'm using the Crystal Mandala deck, yes? Alrighty, guys, I believe, I think that's it. Yeah, let's get started. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Aquarians, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for May 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Aquarius. So, um, in the pre-shuffle, before I started your reading, a number of cards came out. Four, well, four plus an overall energy. Those were the moon, temperance, the wheel of fortune, and death. And underneath the deck, as like an overall energy, was the queen of swords. I do feel like the Queen of Swords is you, even though the Queen of Swords officially is Libran energy, is Libra, um, and Aquarius is represented as a, uh, the King of Swords. I still feel like the Queen of Swords is your energy. Now, this could be a cross watcher that's going through it, going through, yeah, going through it, or going through this, but there is a massive change and this and I, I keep saying that I feel like I'm, I'm a broken record um, but everybody's going through this is a big time period of massive change for everybody for you Aquarius or maybe the person that you're connecting with if this is for the cross watcher um, or if you are an Aquarian and you're someone that you know you're dealing with could be going through this but um, Things are not as they seem with the moon. There's, an there's a lot of illusion around you, and I'm hearing the illusion of Maya is actually what this, that's representing here. Um, there's a need for patience because there is a rebalancing that's happening. Uh, the Wheel of Fortune, karmic change, divine timing, but also death, a transformation. And it's mainly because of the energies between the moon and... Um, Temperance, the moon and temperance representing that time period in which things are murky, you know, it's an in-between process, you're not really here nor there, things are changing all over the place, you can't seem to get your footing, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's a re process, especially with the change, the massive karmic change and transformation represented by death and the Wheel of Fortune. There is absolutely a need for someone to embody the Queen of Swords energy. No bullshit, like straight up, like I don't even have the time to be saying this to you right now. Like get out of my face, that type of energy. You could be feeling very volatile, very aggressive, very on edge, vulnerable. And the Queen of Swords energy is kind of your ally here. I would recommend that maybe you try not to be so cutting. Um, but given the nature of those energies, it feels like par for the course, basically. 
okay? It's, it's like it's to be expected is what spirit is saying. All right, Aquarius. So I'm going to give this three shuffles and we'll see what we've got for you. For my Aquarians, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. <laughs> Aquarius for May 2019. One more shuffle, guys. And then we'll see what we've got. Aquarius, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Boop. All right, Aquarius, overall energy. Interesting. Overall energy, you have the six of pentacles. Okay. Um, there was a card that wanted to show itself. And so that's why I just paused. Um, and I said, interesting. Because it happened to be the Ten of Swords. Now, I didn't take it out. I just looked at it because that's all I was supposed to do. Um, it just wanted to be seen here because it's relevant. And it's absolutely relevant to the energies that were, I, I was picking up on with the pre-shuffle, yes? Um, especially with the, the Wheel of Fortune because the Wheel of Fortune is the tenth card in the Major Arcana. Definitely something has come to an end. And the focus for you right now, Aquarius, or at least the focus needs to be reciprocity balance between give and take and that could be why you're feeling very very um mm, you might be feeling spiteful cutthroat vulnerable defensive on guard ready to cut somebody up if they step to you even think about stepping to you the wrong way because you may have been in a situation in which you were just overgiving and someone was overtaking and not giving a damn thing back again place as it fits. Maybe you're a cross watcher that was dealing with an Aquarius in which that was the case. All right. But the focus right now is reciprocity, balance between give and take. Charity work of some sort. Finances too. It might be something in, in work. Maybe, maybe your wages have been docked for reasons that are Number one, maybe unknown to you or are not fair for like no real reason. Maybe you're trying to get a better job. Maybe you're trying to get a better career. You're fed up with the way your life is. Ultimately, somebody is kind of just fed up with the way that their life is right now. And they're working diligently, very hard to change it for the better. And this doesn't feel like it's in an egotistical way. It's just, it's, I heard she's ready to go. Underneath the Six of Pentacles, you have the Knight of Cups. To me, this is the heart chakra energy. This is being coming from a place of being heart-centered and vulnerable, allowing yourself to be vulnerable. And this could be trying to figure out how to live your life so that you can be open and vulnerable without really getting hurt. Because, yes, the definition of vulnerability is open or receptive to injury, right? Or uh, there's potential, you, you're, you're in an, uh, a space where you could be injured. But being vulnerable is a big part of our lives here on, as a human. And just because you, you are in a place where you are vulnerable does not mean you're necessarily going to get hurt. It's being able to be in a vulnerable space that makes you strong. Vulnerability is not weakness. At least that's how it needs to be seen here, okay? Being heart-centered, having an open heart chakra. And for some of you, this is healing from giving too much or taking too much. Yes? Underneath the Knight of Cups, you have the Hanged Man. This is Pisces energy, potentially. You could be dealing with a Pisces. But there is a need for a new perspective. And this new perspective, I really feel like, could lead to changing the flow of your life. And underneath, yeah, yes, underneath the hanged man is the Page of Pentacles. A brand new start, a new commitment. Starting over in some sense. You could be dealing with an Earth sign, uh, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. You also could be dealing with a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, between the Hanged Man and the Knight of Cups. All right, so getting into your first half of your reading here. Now, I, you can look at this reading as the first half of your month and the second half of your month. 
If that resonates with you, go for it. I recommend that you don't look at it that way. I recommend that you see this as just a big conglomerate of energy and messages and just letting it fall where it falls for you. Okay, here we go. First set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading here, Aquarius, you got, well, looky here, death. You could be dealing with a Scorpio, but this is that transformation I was telling you about. Death is coupled with, yep, the two of wands. And this is absolutely where the hanged man comes into play. Because as you go through this transformation, you're going to have to make a decision as to which direction you want to move in next. You're not, you don't have to rush. You could be in that energy right now. You could be approaching that energy. But ultimately, someone's going to have to make a choice here of which direction they want to move in. And I would say, make that decision based on what you're truly and or most passionate about. Yeah? And that could be something that you're coming to terms with, you're coming to an understanding with, with this Knight of Cups energy, this heart-centered energy, okay? Yields. A second set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading, you have the Four of Pentacles. Well, there are some things that you're going to need to let go of, Aquarius. And it's funny because this is very much a Taurus energy, Tauran energy, right? You could be dealing with a Taurus. But Taurus... And Aquarius and Scorpio and Leo, they're all fixed signs. So it's no surprise that it's coming out here. Taurus energy is kind of rearing its its head here. We are, I mean, we are going into Taurus season within May. Um, as I'm recording this reading right now, we're already in Taurus season. But um, it's funny that Taurus is coming through like that because I feel like there's a little bit of a hoarder energy here. And this is not necessarily physical possessions or, or anything like that. It could be. But it's more of a philosophy, uh, uh, circumstances, uh, belief systems, things that no longer serve you. And you're having to decipher, again, with the, the hanged man energy and this two of wands, you're having to decipher, sift through what really works for you and what doesn't. Now, this absolutely could be a relationship in which you were overgiving or someone or, or, or the other person was overgiving and you're holding on to dear life or someone's holding on to dear life and you gotta let go. Yes. <laughs> the four of pentacles is coupled with the Page of Swords. Reasons why is what I heard. Seeking understanding. This could be you saying to yourself, why on earth am I still holding on to this? You could be dealing with a Gemini also, or maybe another air sign, another Aquarius or a Libra. Oh, wow. I hope you guys can't hear that. Anyway, um, excuse me. I guess in order for you to release this, for someone to release this, you're going to have to understand why. And I, and I really do feel like that's all coming through the transformation of death and the change in perspective in the hanged man. Okay. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here. Oh, look who's back. The Queen of Swords. Libra specifically, but it also could be you, Aquarius. It also could be a Gemini. Your challenge is to cut. Your challenge is to make cuts without overdoing it. There is a little bit of an oversensitive energy here that I'm picking up on. And I'm not saying that, I mean, rightfully so, if the situation is that extreme. But, yeah, the challenge is to be fair, to be fair. See, and that's where, that's where we're drawing the line of overcutting, right? When you're doing things out of spite, when you're a lack of compassion, and which is weird to say with the Queen of Swords here, but that just came through, so I needed to say it. Don't overdo it. Be fair. Be just about it. Because the Queen of Swords does represent Libra energy, and Libra is the sign of justice and balance. So if you're going to cut things, make sure you're cutting in the name of balance and not spite. Yeah? Queen of Swords is coupled with 
Ooh, judgment. Yep, making some decisions. You gotta make some tough decisions here, Aquarius. Or Crosswatcher, whatever, take it as it resonates. You gotta make some, some tough decisions. But ultimately, these are decisions that are gonna serve your highest good. Okay? And even if it's not in the, in the, in the immediate in your immediate life or the immediate future, even if you're going to deal with some sort of, I want to say, minor hardship in terms of where you're actually going, the reasons why you're making this decision, uh, just do it. Your closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, you have, oof, nine of swords, okay. I mean, that's par for the course. <laughs> Nine of Swords is coupled with Temperance. Yeah, good. And actually, Temperance came out... To, um, wow. You've got three of those cards so far. You've got, the, you've got Death, you've got the Queen of Swords, and now you've got Temperance. Sagittarian energy. You could be dealing with a Sagittarius. You could have Sagittarius in your chart. But I know this is an anxious time for you. You've got a lot on your mind right now. You're going through a shit ton. You're probably losing sleep, trying to figure out how you're going to handle the situation, trying to figure out what you're going to do about the situation, just trying to cope with the situation. But just be patient. Because remember, this, what I was picking up on when, I, when this came out in the pre-shuffle is there, things are not as they seem. Because the temperance and the moon were like the, the, the couple, right? And um, Death and the Wheel of Fortune were the couple. I mean, all four of those came out in the same stack, but I, I was seeing the split in the energies in that way. And there, this is a re realchemization period. All right? You are, there's change happening. You have to be patient with it. So I would recommend that you do, you take some sort of time or practice some sort of methods to alleviate stress because literally, the stress isn't going to go away until the situation starts to really level out, until this rebalancing reaches a tipping point, I guess, right? And I'm not saying that to scare you guys. I'm just, it's just a fact. The, the anxiety that you're experiencing is a byproduct of the change that you're going through. So until this change kind of levels itself out a little bit, you're going to have to deal with the stress. So find ways to, uh, to mitigate it, to alleviate it. Go for a run, go for, out for a walk in nature, walk on the beach, walk by the lake, walk in the park, meditate. I don't know. Walk your dog. Play with your dog. Play with your kids. Whatever. Play fucking video games. I don't know. Like <laughs> Whatever is going to help you deal with the stress without escaping your emotions. Because that's also a part of this transformation, this, this, um, yeah, the transformation between death and the realchemization process here. Feel your feelings, deal with them. But as far as the stress goes, throw that shit out the window because I ain't helping nobody. Okay? Second <laughs> half of your reading here, first set of surrounding energies. You got, there you are, officially Aquarius, the King of Swords. And now you've got the counterparts here. So here is, this is the fairness that I was talking about here. Because check it out. Homegirl Queen of Swords is just, she'll just cut you. Like, Honey Badger don't give a fuck. <laughs> okay. Given the right circumstances, and I do feel like the circumstances are, they're the, the potentially right for someone to just cut away willy-nilly. King of Swords is not about that life. King of Swords will cut. As, as soon as he can, as soon as he knows he, something needs to change, he will do it, but he'll do it in a diplomatic manner. Okay? King of Swords is coupled with... Yeah. Five of Cups. And when the Five of Cups came out, I heard mitigate the stress. But also, there is an energy of... Wow. Wow. Whoa, okay, there is an energy of seeing things clearly, seeing things as they truly are. And this Five of Swords, I'm sorry, Five of Cups with the King of Swords is that energy that I was talking about of facing your emotions, facing your feelings, seeing them for what they truly are and dealing with them, not sweeping them under the rug. That's what this is saying here also, okay? Second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading, you've got... 
beautiful, the Six of Swords. Healing energy, moving from rough waters to calmer waters. And remember, there was a mystery card that wanted to show itself as I was finished shuff shuffling, and it was the Ten of Swords. So the worst is behind you. Now you can move forward and heal. Okay, Six of Swords is coupled with the Ace of Wands. Damn, Aquarius, look at you. You on fire. You might be. You might be getting to a place where you can feel confident and um, inspired again. But the only way that is going to happen, okay, not the only way, but the most effective way that's going to happen, the fastest way to get yourself out of this energy with temperance and the nine of swords, facing emotions head on, dealing with your situation head on, not running from anything, facing it. And I mean all of it, okay? Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, you get the Eight of Pentacles doing the work. And this is also another representation of facing what it is you're dealing with. No escapism, Aquarius. Zero. Zilch. Nada. No escapism, okay? Eight of Pentacles is coupled with... Ooh. Damn. The Queen of Cups. Like shit, man. First of all, you could be dealing with a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Specifically, this is Cancerian energy. But your challenge is to do the emotional work. Aquarius, look, look, you can suck your teeth, you can cross your arms, you can side eye me, you can whatever bitch, whatever bitch, all you like. You still have to deal with your emotions, Aquarius. Okay. <laughs> oh. Still got to do it. And I, look, I'm, I'm trying to make this as light as possible because it does feel like this is a pretty fucked, fucking heavy situation. It does. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. It might feel that way because you're having, there are some things that are coming up for you that you're having to deal with and you probably don't deal with your emotions all that well. So you might've been sweeping it under the rug for a while, maybe some years, maybe a few decades, but you know, it's fine, whatever. So that's why it feels like it's so bad. It doesn't have to be that bad. But ultimately, whatever it is you're going through, whatever transformation you're going through, whatever change in perspective you're going through, whatever realchemization process you're going through, you have to deal with your emotions. That is the way that you are going to be able to expedite this situation. Okay? Okay. Your closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, Aquarius, you have the Five of Pentacles. Good God, Aquarius, stop leaving yourself out in the cold. Five of Pentacles is coupled with <laughs> the Nine of Pentacles. So good. Going from leaving yourself out in the cold to being your own best advocate. This also could talk about the overarching change that you've made of being somewhat destitute or lacking, having this lacking of self-worth or something like that, and transforming, switching it up, changing it up, and being a whole new you with the Page of Pentacles, being a whole new person. Page of Pentacles is overall energy underneath the deck. You don't have to feel like you're lacking because ultimately you are abundant, Aquarius. You're strong, you're powerful, you're independent. I mean, damn, you're independent. Ain't nobody as aloof and detached as a motherfucking Aquarius, okay? I don't care what y'all have to say about any other air sign. Aquarius is the king and queen of detachment, period. But you don't have to feel lacking in self-worth. You don't have to feel lacking in independence. It's not you, it is not you, boo. That is not you. That's literally what I just heard. It's not you, okay? Okay. <laughs> Closing message here for you, Aquarius. Oracle guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck. For my Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. 
All right, for the month of May, best message, please, Spirit, to close out this reading for my Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Ve That's really interesting. Hold on a second. Okay, that one. But then I want to look for... Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'm going to take both of them. Here's the deal. Um, as I was pre-shuffling, you know, resetting, because I just did the Capricorn reading right before I did the Aquarius reading. And so I was reshuffling the cards, and this card came out. Card number 22. Ascended Master Hilarion and Green Chrysoprase, Discernment. And as I was just shuffling again, it showed itself, but then it got pushed back into the deck. But something, and I just, that was, and I was like, wait a second, that's that same card. So you guys get a bonus, you get two. But then you also, yeah, okay. And then you also have card number 43, Goddess, Matan, Goddess Matanji and Heliotrope, already there is value, okay? We're going to start with card number 43. If I can just find it. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. Come on. Come on. Boop. Okay. Card number 43, already there is value. We bring you the empowerment to see that already there is value. It is natural for creative energy to become excited by new possibilities, new ideas, and new forms. It is also possible, however, for creative energy to become engaged in liberating the undiscovered value within that which already exists, polishing it until it shines with divine light. Sometimes there is a need to shed the past and all associated with it completely, starting afresh. However, at other times, there is something of value from the past that can, if allowed to bask in the light of your creativity, become very valuable for your future. In your enthusiasm to move forward in life, don't forget to take the value that already exists in your world along with you. Okay? And then also, finally, we're going to read card number 22 for you, Aquarius which is discernment. And I feel like this is a very, very important message for some of you out there. We bring you the blessing of discernment. There is an expression that all that glitters is not gold and that appearances can deceive. This does not mean you must greet the world with and all its appearances with suspicion and distrust. It does mean it is wise to trust what you feel and sense happening beneath the surface, even if that seems to directly oppose what is being said or what many others may believe. The world is filled with opportunities for you to practice sensing truth behind the mask. You will do this most accurately when you allow your instincts and intuition to inform you without rationalizing the information so it matches the superficial appearance of things. If intuition or instinct is niggling at you, then it is trying to communicate something. Listen. Take your time to feel your authentic response. I'm sorry, take your time to feel for your authentic response. Discernment helps you cut through illusion, manipulation, and deception and get to the heart of the matter at hand. It is the intelligent use of your intuition and inst instinct that will help you navigate through the multitude of choices available to you every day and choose what best serves your life journey. I'm really glad I picked that out because that feels perfect. All right, Aquarius, so there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. My email is in the description box below. With that, I hope you guys have a fantastic month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of June. Yes? Take care. Mwah! Bye.